Honda campaigns a refreshed CBR 600RR for 2013. With new wheels and up-spec Showa suspension, as well as tweaks to the bodywork and engine mapping. These revisions improve a bike that's essentially the same platform Honda redesigned in 2007. The Honda CBR 600. That bike, anybody can get on, ride really fast. It's confidence inspiring. It doesn't really have any standout features. It just does everything really well. I said it before, I say it again, easy to ride. I mean, it's just a, a great bike all around, great mid-range, good ergos, feels good, and inspires confidence. It's one of those bikes you just kind of hop on. And you can just ride. You don't really have to worry about, like, anything. It's just so, like, it's so natural and, like, neutral feeling that it's, like, the most simplistic way to ride a sport bike is the CBR 600. But on the flip side, when you really give it the beans and get the RPMs up high, it just doesn't pull with the same veracity as some of the other 600s. The thing that stands out to me on the street is that it's a real comfortable bike, one of the most comfortable. I like the seat. I feel like the riding triangle is pretty good for the 600s. And uh, it's just easy to ride, very easy to ride bike. I, I don't know if Honda makes a bad product. Everything that they do is, is, is pretty spot on. Um, it's a little uninspired sometimes though. There's, there's, nothing, there's nothing that's gonna catch you off guard, which, which is also a good thing. Uh, as far as bad, bad things about the bike, maybe it's looks, that's about it. And a dated, outdated dash. I think they can update that a little bit and, and maybe fix the fairings a little bit. Other than that, I think the Honda is a good package for a new rider or someone that wants to go to track and race and have a solid bike. It's a very good platform to start from. Part of riding on the street is getting that excited excitement feeling, that feeling of adrenaline, that rush of acceleration, the noises, you know, and the Honda just really doesn't do that for me. It's just too utilitarian and plain. But I do have to say, I do like the way the, the thing looks this year with the new red, white, and blue paint job, that Team America Freedom paint job. It does look a lot better and a lot more contemporary, even in the face of the updated Triumph. For me, it's a good choice for a first-time guy getting on a bike that wants to uh, eventually get a little aggressive. You're going to be able to perform on that bike the best. You, you really have to mess up bad to... to um have a bad time on, on the Honda. It's, it's a great motorcycle. Engine performance from the 599cc motor is far from lacking on the street, but it feels tame compared to its rivals. The Honda excels as an easy to ride package, quick turning and confidence inspiring. The refinements from Honda add up to an improved CBR, slotting in third in our Super Sport Street rankings. The ultimate cheater entry in this middleweight Super Sport shootout the GSX-R750 delivers a taste of superbike performance in a super sport package. The all-arounder 750 is an attractive and currently unique offering in the sport bike world. The GSX-R750 really is the outlier in this group. You know, it's the throwback to the old 750 superbike era. And, you know, Suzuki, I think, has done a really good job of just keeping it in the lineup because it offers something that all the other bikes in this shootout can't, which is a perfect blending of a super sport and a super bike. The GSX-R750, that's a bike that I grew up on ever since 2001. They've really dialed in that bike. It continues to be a bike that kind of fits the bill in between the 600 and the 1000, obviously. It's as solid as a 600, as nimble and light as a 600, with an extra grunt almost close to 1000, so I mean, you know, in the right hands, I think that bike can pretty much, you know, keep up with all 1000s anywhere on the track or in the canyons. It's a good bike. 1000 cc bike's a little bit of an overkill. Like, it's like bringing a machine gun to go deer hunting. It's like a little bit overkill. But at the same time, a Jixxer 600, you know, it's like, it's a little bit too small in some, some, some arenas. Some of the attributes that it has is, it's got that low end and mid power that the 600 just doesn't have. So riding a little bit more lazily on the freeway, needing to pass um, without grabbing a bunch of gears like you do on the 600, the 750, you can grab one gear, get on the gas, and it's getting you out of whatever situation you're in. Man, that 750 is the do-all bike. If I had to pick one bike out of all of these, it'd probably be it. It's fun in the canyons, enough horsepower on the highways to get you out of trouble. Um, Horsepower, on the other hand, in corners, it's a bit much when you're just trying to kind of roll it on. It seems to kind of want to surge a little bit, but uh, overall for me, great bike. Well, that Jixxer 750 gives you that hybrid balance. You got that, you got that 1,000cc 
torque, you get the nimbleness and, and the high revving nature of a 600. And uh, I love the Jigsaw 750. It's really easy to ride for me. Um, it's comfortable. I love the way, I love how supple the suspension can be when you have the street settings in there. It just glides over bumps. It just soaks up stuff. Like you can hit big potholes. You can hit big like bumps in the road. And it doesn't beat you up like the Eurobike. And at the same time, it has a little bit of that character. You give that thing the beans, and like the engine makes these crazy noises. Like you definitely know you're hauling butt on the Suzuki because it makes the right sounds. And it, it just makes it more fun to ride on the street. Hats off to the Jixer 750 for sticking around for this long. And it's a bike that I'll always love. The Jixer 750 presses its displacement advantage in the performance categories. The 600s just can't match its power and it equips itself quite well as a real-world street bike. Kawasaki brought the only true ground-up redesign to this year's shootout with the ZX-6R. The headlining change is, of course, the return of its cheater 636cc displacement. But the Ninja also features a potent electronics package, including traction control. The Kawasaki ZX-6R, that bike really worked good. The chassis, super inspiring. It just was an initial bike that you could jump on and, and go the fastest out of the bunch. For me, it's gonna be battling for that top spot. What a rocket ship, man, that thing gets it. It's throttle response is right there, brakes work excellent. Um, the overall aesthetics of the bike, I didn't really care for the pipe. The pipe kind of bugged me a little bit, but um, other than that, I mean, performed excellent. I think that's probably my one of my favorite bikes for the day. Um, felt good all around, power, handling, it was stable. I mean, it did everything I wanted to do. It had torque everywhere. It's probably my, my favorite bike of the day, it's Kawasaki. So obviously this year it's got the Cheater 636 engine. Uh, definitely feels more powerful than the other bikes. Um, you know, how much of that you use on the street maybe, uh, that, that depends on you, but it, it definitely feels like it has a little bit more torque everywhere across the power band. Uh, like the Honda, like the Suzuki, I think it is pretty comfortable. It's a pretty good street bike, but uh, I think really it's a, it's just a good all-around platform. The Ninja ZX6R, I've always liked Ninjas, but uh, they've never really done it for me. But this new Ninja ZX6R with the 636cc engine, man, like what a difference those 37ccs make, man. Like the thing just like, it's such a great street bike now. Like it's just, like from the minute you hop on it, like it's so well built. Like it feels like a quality piece of like hardware. Like you're just sitting on it and like it feels solid and makes all the right noises. Like you give it, you, you dial in the throttle and the thing's got like, it makes like this gnarly, gnarly wail now. It's like, woo, it's just like it's so fun to ride. And, and like the thing pulls now, like usually 600cc four cylinder bikes, like when you're on the freeway cruising at 65, and you want to pass a bunch of cars, you got downshift gears to do that. But on the 636, you don't have to now. You just whack open the throttle. And of course, it's not going to have the torque of like a 1,000 cc bike, but it's definitely better. And it just, it's, it's more applicable in the real world now. But at the same time, it glides over bumps real nice. You know, it gives a real easy ride. The seat's comfortable. The handlebars aren't as crazy forward anymore. It's just a really, really comfortable motorcycle. Sure, it doesn't have the, the adjustable foot pegs like the Suzuki, but I mean, overall, it's a really, really comfortable steed. And uh, I just think it's more applicable in today's market. The 600s are right to complain about the ZX6R's cheater engine, as those extra cubes do translate into improved performance. Our testers enjoyed the electronics package and traction control, and the Ninja has greatly improved as a street-friendly mount. In fact, it's improved enough to climb into second on the score sheet. The Triumph Daytona is no stranger to super sport shootout success, a three-time shootout victor since its 2006 model year debut. After some minor revamps, the 2013 model year features the first engine redesign for the British bike and its signature inline triple. The R-Spec 675 also features top shelf components and electronics, making it a more potent package than ever before. The, the highlight for the Triumph for me is just this triple cylinder engine. Like it, it just offers the best of like all worlds. Like it's super compact, it's really, really narrow and tiny. It's got good mid-range, it's got pretty decent top end now, revs fast. And uh, with the addition of that electronic quick shifter, it's easy to keep that thing on the pipe, it's zinging. 
2.4. There's a couple, couple extra features that it has, a speed shifter. I really like to see that on all the bikes, on all the 600s. Saves on lap time, and actually, it's just a really good feature even for the street. The suspension on the, on the Daytona, that bike is really set up well. It, it stayed really stable, again, from those transitions from left to right, and that is the biggest thing out on the street, where when you go to flick it over, you wanna make sure that that bike is landing and it's planted and firm, and Daytona really does that. Slipper clutch on it specifically, man, you could jam down the gears and it, and it never chattered, never, never got you out of shape. Overall aesthetics of the bike look nice, pipe sound rad, cool bike. Probably comparable to the A4A Evo, but I, I would take the Triumph over the A4A Evo just because of the feedback I got from the bike. Great handling, great power. It almost felt like a Jacob Jigsa, you know, 750. It was really, really balanced in the turns. You know, between the Triumph and the, and the Kawasaki, I pretty much have them on the same scale, almost even as far as my favorites for the day. This is a multiple Super Sport shootout winner, and there's a good reason for it. It's, it's a super dialed package. It just does everything, and then now this year, it's got the quick shifter, which is just another thing. You know, I, I like that on the track, but on the street, that's, I mean, if you're in the mid corner and you want to shift up, I mean, it's just so easy to ride, but it delivers such amazing performance. When it comes to my favorite on the street, I always defer to comfort and just fun factor. And for me, the fun is in the Triumph Daytona. It's a bike that I've gotten to know really well over the years, and it's a bike that I feel really comfortable on. And it just, that inline triple really speaks to me, and that would be my pick for a super sport bike. While the Triumph sports a premium MSRP, as compared to the more affordable Japanese bikes, the Daytona ekes out another super sport victory with its faultless performance and engaging personality. The inline triple continues to deliver, and the rest of the component package has improved as well. A shootout winning formula.